Welcome back to the Redwood JS tutorial. In part one, we learned about pages and layouts and how to generate those on the command line. And now in part two, we're going to get to the good stuff, talk to the database. Let's get started. In part one, we spent all our time in the web side. Now we're going to go to the API side and we're going to go to Prisma. We use a library called Prisma, which is actually for talking SQL, writing SQL to our database. And inside there is a file, schema.prisma. This defines our database schema. The schema is the names of the tables, what fields they have, what data types those fields are, if they have a default value, etc. And it's a limitation right now when this file exists, there has to be at least one model. So we have this user example model in here, but we can just delete that and write our own. And we're going to be storing blog posts in our blog. So we'll call our model post. And then what fields do we want? We're going to want an ID that's going to uniquely identify every post. And there's a couple special directives here. So we have int, it's an int data type. And at ID, let's Prisma know this is going to be our ID column, our primary key. And then we want a default that is going to auto increment, which means every time a new record is created, it's going to automatically set the ID to the next number. So one, two, three. And we'll have a, we'll have a title. And that's going to be a string. And I'll have a body, which is a string. And then finally, we'll have a created at date, which is a date time. And it's going to have a default value of now. So the database sets it to you know, that default of right now. Save that. And we'll see this is our Redwood dev still running down here and generated the Prisma client. Every time we make a change to this, uh, Prisma has some JavaScript that's created behind the scenes that you can actually access your models. Now what we need to do is use another Prisma library called Migrate. And that makes little snapshots of changes that are going to be made to the database. And we use a new command here, yarn Redwood DB. And the first thing we need to do is save this as a snapshot, as a migration snapshot. And you'll see here, we don't have a database yet. So it's asking us first, we want to create a database. And by default, Prisma is going to use SQLite. So we'll say yes, go ahead and create that. And you'll see here it created API Prisma dev DB, which is a SQLite database file. And then we're going to name our migration. In this case, we're creating the posts table. So we'll just call this create posts. And it has some output here. And you'll see now that we have a migrations directory. And it puts a timestamp. It has a timestamp along with that name that we gave it, create posts. And in there is the snapshot of when this migration was created. This is what the schema looked like. And then it has a JSON file, which is here's all the changes that need to occur to the database to get it to match this snapshot. But we don't need to worry about that stuff manually because we're going to run another command, yarn redwood db up. And it's going to apply that migration to move the database up to the next state. And you see they're done with one migration. So now our db it will actually have that table in it. Great, so we've got our database, we've got our database table, our post table. How do we get some data in and out of there? Normally at this point, you know, you'd start creating some components to start showing that data, writing some GraphQL to fetch in and out of the database. But we found here the Redwood team, we were doing this a lot, and that's one of the things we wanted to improve upon. So we created yet another generator, yarn Redwood generate scaffold. And this creates the scaffolding to be able to talk to this post database table. It's going to create all the CRUD actions, CRUD, create, retrieve, update, destroy. It'll do that for us. So we yarn redwood generate scaffold and the name of the model we want to scaffold, in this case, post. And you can call it post if you want or lowercase post, doesn't matter. And you'll see a bunch of writing up here here. But before we check out what that did, let's go actually see what happened on the actual site. So now if we go to slash posts, remember our database table was post. And we, by default, give it the plural posts because you're going to be working with multiple of them. And now we actually have something here. So no post yet. Create one. Yes. First post. Save it. And there it is. There's it listed. There's ID one. There's the date stamp right now. And I can go and make another one. And you'll see we can just show the detail of that post. We can edit the post. We can even delete a post and we'll get a warning letting us know, are you sure you want to delete this? So how do we get all this stuff? Where did all this scaffold come from? So if we take a look back in our code base, what it wrote, you'll see there's a few things here. So on the API side, we got a GraphQL SDL file, schema definition language. This defines the endpoint GraphQL is going to present. So we created a type for post, and there's all those fields that we created. 
Uh, we also created a couple queries, posts, which will return all the posts, or post, which will return one post. And then we follow GraphQL has a recommendation for making these input types. So we create a post input. And notice it doesn't contain the ID or the created at, because those are set by default for us in the database. So but you can set the title on the body. And then we have mutations in GraphQL. These are the create, update, and delete. Create will take that input type. Update will take that input type along with the ID of the record you want to update. And delete just takes the ID of the record you want to delete. And then we also got a services file. So if you look in here, services, posts, posts. Here's now all those GraphQL query types, posts, post, create post, update post, delete post. We have a service for each one of those. Posts, post, create post, update post, delete post. And normally, you know, in this SDL file, you'd be writing these resolvers to say, how does, what does create post actually do? What does update post do? What does delete post do? In this case, as long as the name is the same, Redwood will automatically go into the post service and find that resolver definition for you. So you don't have to write it manually. So now in each of these functions, this is just uh, Prisma code. So db.post, that was the name of our model. So Prisma provides that as a post object. And then we're calling find many to find them all, find one by ID. Create takes that input again. Uh, update takes the ID and the input, and then delete takes the ID. So this is all wired up for you automatically. You don't have to do anything else other than create this function and then create the types here. That's it for the API side. So now what do we get on the web side? So if we open up web and we go to, let's start here at routes. We've got four routes for us. Post new, post edit, single post. So posts ID is the post page and then posts, which is multiple. Actually, we even created a CSS file here for you. So if you go to index, you'll see we're now importing the scaffold CSS. And this now has the styles needed to make that page formatted a little nicer than Times New Roman. And there's a little note in here about how to edit this, the sort of conventions that we follow. We use some Tailwind CSS, but it's all rolled into this one single file. So there's no external requirements to get those styles. So if we take a look at pages here, what did we get? We got the edit post page, new post page, post page, and posts page. We created a post layout as well that contains all that shared header, the new post button, all these, this stuff that wraps these little tables inside here. And if you look at, for example, the new post page, you might see the new post component. So if we look over here in components, we got a bunch of these. We got posts, post, post form. This is what you see on new and edit. Here's the new post, the one that was included before. And then we got these cells. We'll talk more about cells soon, but the cells sort of, an, anytime there's like a database call involved, you'll see a cell, right? So here's the query to get data. And then we present that data here. In this case, we give it to the posts component and the scaffold created all this for us. So it gave us a few nice test pages to be able to get data in and out of the database quickly as we're developing. We don't have to worry about going to the command line, firing up, you know, a SQL GUI to write SQL and insert these records in the database. We do it all through this front end. And you can actually keep this front end around if you eventually decide, you know what, this makes for a great admin page. We'll just move this to the admin and these become the admin pages for creating and editing posts. And you may be wondering why some of these are singular and some of these are plural. We sort of follow the convention of whatever would sound most natural in normal speech, right? So I'm going to view the posts, multiple posts, or I'm going to edit a post, singular. So you see stuff like new and edit are singular because they're dealing with a single thing. Whereas sort of this index page is page where you see all the posts. This is posts, plural. We've got all these scaffolded pages, but we can't expect a regular visitor to our site to view our blog like this, right? And we're especially not going to let them edit and delete our blog posts. So we need to make an actual list of blog posts that a normal user would see when they come along to the site. And that's probably something that would belong at the home page, right? So when you come to the home of our blog, this is where you'd see our list of blog posts. So let's create one of those. So if we close some of this stuff, and let's start here on our home page, right? So right now all we're saying is this is the home page. This is where we're going to want to display our stuff. Now, how do we do that? So we need to think about, you know, blog posts are not going to load instantaneously in this app because it's talking to the database. So there needs to be like a loading state. And, you know, when we first install our blog, maybe we don't have any blog posts yet. So there might be something saying this site doesn't have any posts. And what if there's an error? We need to display that message somehow. So this is turning out to be a lot of stuff we need to do here just to get started. And we saw this pattern a lot in apps. 
uh, the Redwood team is we're all former app developers for different products. And we realize this is a very common pattern you see a lot. So what if we could somehow make that easier for everyone? That's where we came up with this idea of a cell. So the cell sort of encapsulates all these states, the loading state, the error state, the empty state into one component. All the data is kind of co-located along with the actual fetching logic, the data fetching logic. So everything's in one place laid out really nicely. And we're going to create one of those now. So this is where we're going to need to put this, this cell, right? Is where we want to display these blog posts. So naturally we have a generator for that. So we're going to yarn redwood generate cell. And in this case, we can't call it posts because we already got those generated by our scaffold. This name's already taken. So let's call it, how about if we call it blog posts? And you'll see that created something in components here. So there's blog post cell. So what do we have here? So we have a query and you see all these exports, all these different uh, exported functions here. Query, this is gonna be our GraphQL query to actually get the data. The loading state will be presented here. So in, while the data is loading, this will be rendered. If the data comes back and it's empty, so either it's null or it's an empty array, it'll render this. If there's an error on the back end, it'll render this. And finally, once it's done loading, everything looks good, then it'll render the success component here, success function. And we have some fallbacks. If you, for example, don't define any of this, then it'll just render success and it'll be up to you to determine if it's loading or not, or if there's an error or if it's empty, you'll have to decide what to do in here. But for now, let's leave it like this. So the one thing we need to change though, is you'll notice this query is called blog posts. We don't have any blog posts query, right? If we look at our GraphQL, we have a posts query. And the reason this is called blog posts is because it's the same name as the cell. So by default, the name you give the cell, we automatically assume you have a GraphQL query name that. In this case, we don't because we had to rename it. So we're gonna change all these to just posts. So we're gonna do a post query, we're gonna get the IDs. And then the results of this query will automatically be available to, to success in a prop here called posts. And in this case, the default is just a string of five, just so we can see if it worked. Now we need to use this cell in our actual home page. So let's go back to home page down here. And now we'll do that here. So this is gonna be the blog post cell. And don't forget to import it. And you may notice we don't have any imports here for React. That's another thing, the uh, Redwood team here, we kept seeing these import React over and over and over again. So we auto import that for you. So you don't have to import the core React functionality, just the other parts of your app from within your, you know, your source directory here. And you'll see too, like we have this, uh, not only do we have this shortcut for SRC, we also, you don't have to say blog post cell, blog post cell. We assume there's a file in there named the same as the directory. So we kind of organize all the code around a particular component or part within this directory. So the, the actual component is here, the test files are here. Eventually we'll have um, storybook stories here. We'll have readmes in here and they all kind of co-locate with the component itself. So in here, you just reference the, the path, the directory not the actual individual component file. So we've got the blog layout. It's going to run to the blog post cell. And if we go out to the site, there we go. So there's the JSON stringify of grabbing the ID from Prisma. And Prisma includes this type name for itself just to keep track of what it's doing. So what if we go in here now to our cell and in addition to the ID, we'll get the title and the body and the created at. And if we go back here, we'll see those. Now we get those ID, title, body, created at. Great. Let's make that look a little nicer here. So inside of our cell, instead of just stringifying this, let's actually format this just a little bit. So let's return posts map, and we're gonna go over each post. And let's do a little semantic HTML here, and we'll render an article where the key is the post ID. And we'll have a header with an H2 of the title. And the post body. And maybe we'll clean this up a little bit here. There you go, first post, second post. And I mentioned the uh, 
the loading state. If we want to cheat and see that here, we can go to the network and we can pretend that we're on slow 3G. And you'll see if we reload this. We'll automatically get that loading state for us. There's loading. Boop, and it pops in. So you'll find this will become sort of your standard operating procedure and when you're creating parts of your Redwood app. You'll uh, edit the schema to create a database table. You run those migrations, upgrade the database. Maybe you'll run a scaffold to have a CRUD interface to that table. And then you'll create a cell to load that data, which takes care of the loading empty failure states. And then add the cell to a page. The page is wrapped in a layout. As a matter of fact, let's do that now. So let's create a blog post detail page. So this will be, you know, the home page lists all the blog posts, sort of like a summary, maybe one paragraph, first paragraph of each post. And then you click through to view the full post on its own page, which has a unique URL. So we'll start where we normally start at, and we'll yarn redwood generate page. And remember that post is already taken, so we'll call this blog post. And there's our blog post. And if we find our page we created here, we have blog post page. So now we should be able to, in our blog post cell, add a link. We'll import it up here. So now we go to the blog post page. Now, we need some way to go to a single blog post. Right now, both these links go to the same URL, so there's no way to tell the difference between the first and the second post. And usually that's done with the param and the URL, so how are we going to do that? Let's try. We want something like ID is post ID. So what happens if we do that? So now we got ID is one. We got that up in the URL. Can we make that a little cleaner? How about blog post slash one? So what we need to do here is in our routes, we'll be able to say, okay, there's gonna be another part to this URL and whatever is there, I want you to put it in a variable ID for me. So when we save that and come back here. Now, what does that look like? Ah, now we got blog post slash one slash two, good. Now we need some way to actually get the proper blog post from the database, one or two. This sounds like a job for a cell because we're gonna retrieve data from the database. So yarn read what generate cell. And again, this is gonna be the blog post cell. Remember blog posts was the one on the homepage that does multiple posts. This is just gonna pull a single post. And you'll see we have our blog post cell. And again, we wanna change this to just post because there's no blog post query type. And this is gonna get it by ID, but we need to tell it which one to get. So we'll use the GraphQL syntax here. We're gonna say ID which is an integer in our database. And that's gonna be made available to the post here. So now this query will accept an ID, pass it through, and now we'll want to actually use our blog post cell in the blog post page. So if we go back to our page and we'll import it here. And instead of this, we'll just render blog post cell. But how are we gonna get that ID to the blog post cell? Well, Redwood has a little helper for us. So since we put that ID in the route, it automatically makes it available to any pages that it renders. So there's actually an ID prop being passed through here. So now what if we do this? So we get the ID, our route's gonna come through here, pluck the ID, call our blog post page, send the ID in, and then we're gonna send it through to the cell and the cell is looking for an ID. Another helper that Redwood provides is any parameter you pass through here is automatically available in the query. So uh, this ID actually does exist. So let's see what that gets us. Save these. And that's not quite right. So if we look down here in the web inspector, we can see variable string ID got invalid value one. So it got something, 
right? It actually got the one, but it needs to be of type int. So this is another helper that WebWord provides. We call these route param types. You can tell it, hey, when you get ID, coerce it into an integer for me. And you can customize these. You can make these whatever you want, but we have a couple built-in ones and int is one of them. Now, what if we go back? Oh, look what we have here. Got ID one. So if we go back to two, there's two. Let's take our page and wrap it in our layout. Okay, now we're looking pretty good. And this is probably a perfect spot to uh, refactor this into a component, right? So we'll take each one of these and this will just show this on the actual blog detail page. Of course, we have a generator that generates components for us just in case you don't want to do any typing at all. Yarn Redwood generate component and we'll call it blog post. And you'll see it just gives the kind of the same thing. Here's where you can find me. So if we go in here and let's cut this out and we'll render blog post or post equals post. And we want to give it a key. And we want to import. And we took away the links. We actually don't need that anymore. And you'll see blog post, blog post. So then we'll go into blog post and we'll put in our actual output here and now this is going to get a post and we need our link import again okay back where we were so now let's do the same thing in blog post cell let's just borrow this in this case we won't need the key because we're only showing one. And we we'll want to query the rest of our data here. So title, body, created at. There we go. First post, second post. So how's that data flow again? So we start here in the route, we get the ID as an int, that goes to the blog post page where we get the ID for free, pass it through the blog post cell. Blog post cell runs a query, gets the post from the database, makes that post available here to our success, and then we render blog post, and blog post takes that post and writes it out. So that feels like a good part two. Uh, come on back in part three, and we'll actually build a form from scratch not using the scaffolds and get an idea of what's involved there. I'll see you over there.